Hey everyone, Randy from Gaming Geek here. If you walk into any major US retailer that carries games and are looking for a VR headset, you're most likely going to be presented with two options, the PSVR or PlayStation VR and the Quest 2. Now the PSVR came out all the way back in October of 2016, whereas the Quest 2 came out four years later in October of 2020. Now you might think that because the Quest 2 is newer, that surely it's the no-brainer choice to pick up, but is that really the case? Should you ever consider picking up a PSVR over a Quest 2? Or are you better off just waiting for the PSVR 2? Well, let's get into the details and find out. Let's start with what is probably most important to you, your wallet. Right now, the Quest 2 can be purchased at two different price points, $300 for the 128GB model and $400 for the 256GB model. And Quest 2 is a standalone all-in-one unit, meaning that everything you need to game in VR is included in the box, with no devices or additional purchase necessary. The PlayStation VR is a little trickier to price, because you can buy all of its components separately or together as a bundle. But right now, what I'm finding in stores is this bundle. It comes with everything you need to enjoy your PSVR, as well as the exclusive Iron Man VR game, for $350. I think that PlayStation is offering this bundle to directly compete with Quest 2 in both price and functionality, but the price of the PSVR comes with a huge asterisk, because the PlayStation VR is not an all-in-one unit. You have to attach the PSVR to either a PS4 or a PS5 in order for it to be functional. But if you're someone who doesn't have a PlayStation, you're probably not interested in the PSVR in the first place, but just in case you're under the impression that the PSVR is an all-in-one unit, know that it is not. So the price of these two units is more or less comparable, but that leads us to the question of hardware and specs. Which of these two headsets will get you the most bang for your buck when it comes to the technology inside of them? Now you're probably thinking, the Quest 2 is four years newer, surely it has better specs. And yeah, for the most part, you're right. But let's get into the specifics. First, let's talk displays. The PlayStation VR has a 1920 by 1080 OLED panel inside with a refresh rate up to 120 Hz. The display gives 960 by 1080 pixels per eye. That's a little over 1 million each. The colors are vibrant and contrast is great. I know a million pixels per eye seems like a lot, but the resolution is actually on the low end for VR headsets, so you'll most likely be able to pick out individual pixels, giving the image a little bit of that screen door effect. The display really isn't that bad, uh, and the colors are fantastic, but I'm personally a little forgiving when it comes to resolution, so your mileage may vary. The Quest 2 has a 3664 by 1920 LCD panel with a refresh rate of up to 120 Hz. That means each eye is given a little over 3.5 million pixels each. That level of pixels means that the Quest 2 doesn't suffer from the screen door effect at all. Although the black levels aren't perfect, the image quality is great and super vibrant. To me, the display inside the Quest 2 is really great and doesn't have many compromises. The colors may not be quite as good as what's in the PSVR, but the much better resolution makes this the clear winner in my mind. But now, let's talk about comfort. You may be able to tell by looking at these which one is more comfortable, but it's complicated. So straight up, the PSVR is the clear victor when it comes to strap build quality. It's well padded, and the locking tightening mechanisms ensure that the headset fits snugly. But that doesn't mean it's perfect. Occasionally, the muscles in the back of my head will start to feel fatigued when I use the PSVR, and I've wondered if the lack of a strap across the top is to blame. Also, there are these little silicone sheets that lay against your nose. They're meant to block outside light from getting into your eye, and although they work fairly well, I found them to be quite distracting the first few times I used the headset. For some reason, they really tickled my nose, but now that I'm used to them, they don't bother me. Overall, PSVR is comfortable and feels secure when you wear it. These padded straps really help to make the headset feel light on your head. By comparison, the straps on the Quest 2 are pretty bare bones. Things are tightened up using Velcro on the top and a sort of friction buckle for the straps that wrap around the back and sides. And it's the Quest 2 straps that really have me torn, because at first I didn't just think this was uncomfortable, but unplayably uncomfortable. I couldn't even wear this thing for a few minutes without feeling fatigued. It was no wonder to me why so many others recommended upgrading to the Elite strap, which is currently $50 on the company's website. I honestly couldn't believe that the Quest 2 had such an awful strap. But one day I was experimenting, and I tried putting the straps on the outside of my ears instead of on top, and the headset magically became 100 times more comfortable. I don't know why this works for me, maybe it's just the shape of my head, but since I started doing this, the Quest 2 is plenty comfortable to me, and I don't see any reason to pay extra for the upgraded straps. It's still maybe not quite as comfortable as the PSVR, but it's perfectly usable. 
Now let's move on to the reason that you'd buy one of these headsets in the first place, the games. With the PSVR, things are pretty straightforward. For the most part, all the VR mainstays are here. Beat Saber, Super Hot, Job Simulator, but those games can pretty much be played on any VR headset, including the Quest 2. What's more interesting is what games are exclusive to the PSVR. I think this is where the headset really shines, because there are some serious must-plays that can only be played on PSVR. Astrobot Rescue Mission is one of my favorite platformers of all time, VR or otherwise. Resident Evil 7 has a VR mode exclusive to the PSVR, and it's probably the scariest experience you can have in virtual reality. Blood and Truth is a criminally underrated shooter that predates and gives Half-Life Alex a run for its money. And that's really just a few of the awesome exclusives available on PSVR. Also, unlike the Quest 2, PlayStation VR games can be purchased physically, which is pretty cool if you're a collector like me. But let's go ahead and talk about what games are on the Quest 2. Things here are a little complicated. You see, if you're wanting to use the Quest 2 as a standalone all-in-one, you'll be limited to what games are available on the Oculus Store. And don't get me wrong, most of those big VR mainstays are there. But what Quest 2 is lacking is a set of really compelling exclusives, at least in my opinion. I mean, Resident Evil 4 VR is really great, but I'm not sure it's the killer app that the Quest 2 needs. That being said, if the Quest 2 is your only VR headset, I think you'll find that the games in the built-in store will be plenty to keep you occupied. I just think that the PSVR has better exclusives, if that matters to you. But there's one huge, super important thing about the Quest 2 that I've been holding back from you regarding games. And that's the fact that the Quest 2 doesn't have to be an all-in-one. You can hook it up to a PC and use it more like a traditional VR headset. You don't have to be bound to the Oculus Store. When hooking up to a PC, you have access to so many more VR games, including true masterpieces like Half-Life Alex. You still won't have access to the PSVR exclusives, but being able to hook the Quest 2 up to a PC really makes this thing way more valuable and flexible. But here's the caveat. You first have to have a PC capable of running VR games in the first place. And gaming PCs don't come cheap, especially right now. Oh, and by the way, the Oculus Link cable is $80 for a cable. You can purchase cheaper knockoff cables on Amazon, which is what I did, but you may experience issues when using them. My headset straight up refuses to test my cable's speed, but it seems to work fine nonetheless. There's also AirLink, which allows you to hook your Quest 2 up to a PC wirelessly, but it's currently a beta feature and I haven't had much success getting it to reliably work. So I guess for now, I'm gonna stick with the cable. The main point I'm trying to make is that the Quest 2's ability to hook up to a PC makes it extremely practical. But if you wanna unlock the full capabilities of the headset, whether that's upgrading the strap or just making it so that you can play games that aren't available on the built-in store, your investment is gonna be a fair bit more than just the cost of the headset. How much more just depends on your wants and needs. But now let's quickly talk about controllers. I really like the Quest 2's controllers. They're comfortable, work well, and have a lot of neat tech inside. If you don't like these controllers for some reason, I think that you can use alternate controllers with the headset, although I can't envision a scenario in which I'd personally want to use something else. The PlayStation VR can be used with either a DualShock 4 controller or, more often in my case, PlayStation Move controllers. Honestly, neither control method is perfect, so which one you choose to use will probably vary depending on what game you're playing. The Move controllers are much more immersive, but they lack joysticks, so their functionality is somewhat limited. The DualShock 4 works really well for some games, but holding a traditional controller somehow feels distinctly un-VR. I think that the Quest 2 has controllers that make much more sense for the VR medium. So a final word on these two headsets. Honestly, I think they're both really great, but it just depends on what you need out of a VR headset. If you really want to play those PlayStation exclusives, I really do think you will love the PSVR, especially if you're a physical collector. The specs won't blow you away, but I think that the exclusive games are absolute must-plays for VR enthusiasts. And odds are, if you're interested in the PSVR, you likely already have a PS4 or PS5. But otherwise, if you're just looking for a really great all-around VR headset, I think Quest 2 is the obvious choice, and it's what I recommend the most. Let's be honest, the big downside of the PSVR is that it's somewhat outdated. And unless you just have to have a VR headset right now, you may just want to wait for the PSVR 2. The Quest 2 is four years newer, has better specs, a great price point, and the utility it provides by being an all-in-one that can also hook up to a PC shouldn't be understated. I think it satisfies the needs of both the casual and the more invested VR fans. If you feel that this video has earned your support, you know what to do. We're all about gaming here at Gaming Gig, not just VR, so make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see what videos we make in the future. But whether you decide to stick around or not, I just want to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video, and I hope you enjoyed my comparison of the Quest 2 and the PlayStation VR.